let me ask you this question before you were uh, employed by a nice consulting firm. You did say on this podcast that Snowflake was <laughs> um, uh, dog shit pussy. <laughs> Do you still share the same opinion? Snowflake now? is snow, uh, as in the stock. The product's <laughs> great. I actually think the product's really good for what it does and what you use it for. Um, the the stock, and I was just like, I can't. I still can't wrap my brain around like the the valuation that they get because it's like. Their last earnings report, from what I heard, it was like growth continued to decelerate. They were making less money, but everyone's like super stoked. You know, I don't know why, but like everyone's mm -hmm. like, yay. You know, and like, the, the, apparently everyone was very psyched on that. And, and the problem with the Snowflake is like they, their initial use case, data warehousing, like that was a mature market. Like we already kind of all this, all the technology that makes a good data warehouse, we knew it nine years ago 10 yeah. years ago it's nothing's changed there and like there, there's only so many people so many users of a data warehouse you know like you aren't going to scale it at the multiple at the valuation that they're holding snowflake at so snowflake's rapidly trying to reinvent itself it's trying to become a lake house and then it's trying to like grow through acquisition right now mm -hmm. and none of that bodes well you know if you're mm -hmm. if you're this company that needs to trade it's trading on ridiculous multiple and they they need to reaccelerate growth like you can't do it through the data warehouse market, which is your core business. You ain't gonna data do warehouse again is just storing either. the data essentially, right? A we warehouse have... is like when you think of a data warehouse, just saying it's a special kind of database that makes analytics easy. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. We've known what makes that good for about 10 years and nothing's really fundamentally changed there. So they're not gonna have a big technology breakthrough in the data warehousing space. The warehouse became the lake house, which is this idea that you combine streaming and batch processing with model deployment. And like you're gonna kind of do continuous reinforcement learning. That becomes the lake house. Snowflake was behind the eight ball on that. Databricks is really leading the way there. If you want a lake house, you use Databricks. You, know, you don't use Snowflake. Although Snowflake has offerings there, they're just chasing and kind of, in my opinion, it's not the same level of quality that they had on the core data warehouse offering. So all I could see coming down the pipe was like, their growth rate's gonna slow and they're gonna struggle to try and be differentiated in these other areas and get the same level of adoption and market share as they got in the warehousing space because they had a really unique compute model that made mm -hmm. it scalable in the cloud, you know, and just easy to sign up for low friction. And they throw great parties, right? Like Snowflake throws great parties, <laughs> but you can only throw so many fucking parties. You know? so, so, like, so, so you're saying the ontology layer and, and that stuff is where real value is and Snowflake's not necessarily offering that. I'm not comparing them to Palantir. I was just saying like, like they are a very shallow, fundamentally a mm -hmm. shallow platform because their core focus is on data warehousing. That's traditionally what they were. Then they tried to become a lake house because that's where the market was moving and where the market opportunity was. They sort of lagged. They definitely lagged behind offerings like Databricks, in my opinion. Palantir is a whole nother thing. Like Palantir is not a lake house. It has a lot of those features. You can do lake house management. You can build a lake house on Foundry if you want to. Foundry is a whole nother thing, though. It's, it's not really like mm -hmm. directly competing, in my opinion. It's not like it just did that. Uh, this week, another acquisition of uh, Samoha, uh, a company focused on uh, secure data collaboration. Yes. And uh, we are now at four M&A closed in uh, 2023. Can we see this as a sign of weakness uh, or uh, does this acquisition comes in your opinion, like uh, in general, like these acquisitions uh, Snowflake is doing uh, is because uh, they are desperately trying to catch up because they don't have uh, the uh, R&D capabilities to actually develop the new product uh, or uh, something else? What's your perspective, like your personal view on this? Uh, I think that they've been struggling for a while now to like lead on the innovation front. And, and most of the new features I've seen them adding were in response to what Databricks was doing. I don't know if you guys remember, but like Databricks and Snowflake have no love loss between those two. They have publicly fought back and forth, you know, mm -hmm. and gotten into some, some interesting... Um, shouting matches at each other <laughs> over the past few years. But Databricks basically been kicking the crap out of them on the innovation front. And if you look at their founders, there's it's no secret why, right? Like, look at who founded Databricks. They've invented every major piece of technology in the space versus who's founded Snowflake, right? So, like, I think that, like, on some level, they're just going to be outclassed by some of these companies who have it in their DNA to, like, innovate at a different level. And so they're going to be acquiring... That doesn't mean they can't put together a decent plot through like a network. Think of it as like a network. Say they build this network of acquisitions and that really expands their market. That doesn't mean so they could be successful doing that. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's another very hard, though. 
It's very it's hard. hard. It's hard. The yeah. build versus buy mentality and what you're talking about there, it yeah. literally does come down to in the software world. Do we have the time to innovate the talent and will it cost us cheaper and can we do it well? Or can yeah. we go buy this company and then the real risk becomes, do we actually integrate the culture, the talent, the tools? Yeah. That process of integration is where like you have to be good at it, right? There's very have, few companies yeah. in the world who are great at consistent m and Exactly. Exactly. So we'll see. I, I think the jury's still out there. Maybe they do make that a successful growth strategy, you know? Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, but you, we need to see indications that it's working at some point. I'm guessing like they're going to have to show growth reaccelerating. They're going to have to show how these acquisitions are making sense in their product stack. People will start asking the questions eventually. I'm just saying that there's a lot of euphoria on wall street over that stock. And I've been seeing it for a long time. It just wasn't making any real sense. I know it sounds funny being a Palantir shareholder, but like there's a difference between like the retail community and, and wall street and, and like wall street has traditionally been really in love with snowflake. I just couldn't figure out why I'm like, there's just, I can't see this company ever living up to the current valuation given the, what it's current technology staff. You know, it's just kind of no, I can provide you a simple answer. They made an IPO, a very yeah. big IPO hyped uh, and where they paid uh, literally all the big uh, investment banks. This has yeah. the consequences of uh, Wall Street naturally appreciating that, but also Wall Street being educated on the company while uh, Palantir said, okay, we don't spend money on these uh, basically marketing yeah. for IPO. So the process of actually discovering, discovering what Palantir is, uh, what Palantir actually does, uh, is a way longer process and until you are really incentivized because you see some value there you just don't do that that's the reason why yeah. after three years uh, just now wall street is uh, <laughs> starting to grasp okay maybe palantir is not really a consulting company as uh, people say 